To start with, what we're going to demonstrate is the difference of the action with the material that we're going to be using versus the most common material used today. With that, we'll move over to our little demonstration. This is a little fresh hole blood that I drew on myself a couple minutes ago. For sake of demonstration, we're going to place one puddle of blood right here. We're going to put another puddle of blood right here. Now, the most common agent used today is essentially a 25% aluminum chloride solution. Uh, most common brand name is Hemodent. We're going to take and place one drop of this Hemodent into this puddle of blood. We're going to place one drop of the astringent solution. It's a 13% ferric sulfate solution into this puddle of blood. Now we're going to st stir the two up. We'll start with our hemodent. We'll stir that up real well. Hemodent essentially does not coagulate blood. We're relying primarily on the astringent properties of it, uh, hopefully to cause a little constriction of the epithelium and the endothelial lining of the vessels for its effectiveness. We're now going to stir the blood with the astringent in it. Essentially, this is our difference. It will form a dark coagulum instantaneously. It works. Its modality is by precipitation of blood protein. That's neat if you use it right. It's a mess if you use it wrong. What we need to do in order to make this coagulum work for us is we need to be able to get this coagulum to form right within the little orifices of the cut capillaries. If we simply take the solution, dump it into the sulcus, or even simply place it on a cord, it'll form this coagulum with the extravasated blood that's already out into the sulcus. We'll rinse it out, and it'll still be bleeding underneath. So we have to be able to get the solution right down in the capillary orifices, cause the coagulum to form within those orifices in order to be effective. The way we achieve that is with a little device. It's called a deno infuser. It's just a little bent needle. It's got a little soft padded end on the end of it. We use one cc tuberculin syringes. They come sterile so we can dry out the bottle for what we need. We put it onto the tip good and firm. Then we go into that sulcus after we've pulled the cord. And as we circle around, we burnish that solution in against that cut connective tissue. Now, I use the word burnish. You have to press against that cut connective tissue as you apply the solution. We press against it for two reasons. Number one, that gets the solution down where it does the job against the cut capillaries. Number two, by burnishing, it tends to wipe and or scrape any excess coagulum off that may be bridging beyond those capillary orifices. So there's nothing protruding out there that can be bumped and dislodged to trigger it and make it bleed again. At that juncture, we simply take the vacuum, the air water syringe, we give it a good, firm, healthy air water blast. Now, we've been geared since dental school days to be afraid of hardly blowing on that tissue for fear of making it bleed. But if that'll make it bleed, your impression syringe tip touching it'll make it bleed. We want to find out before we mix, not after we mix. Okay, we get right down in against that cut connective tissue, and we burnish this into it. Now, the advantage of this over, say, cotton pledgets is that you can maintain fresh solution constantly against that cut connective tissue. You're not going back and forth between a dap and dish and the mouth. Besides that, you can actually infuse underneath the surface of the cut tissue if necessary to obtain hemostasis. You can use positive pressure on it. Whereas with cotton pledgets, as soon as the a solution becomes tied up with the extravasated blood. It's inactivated. It's no longer beneficial right down against those cut bleeding capillaries. Just rub it into the tissue. Don't be afraid of pushing on it. You won't cut the tissue. It's got that little padded end on the end of it. <clears throat> You see a little area of bleeding over here. Get right down in, burnish that into it, shut it down, leave it moist. We're not vacuuming as we're circling around. Now, if you've got quite a bit of bleeding, you're going to have a fair amount of this coagulum piling up. That's all right. You've still got the solution going down, doing its job. Circle around there. OK, what we're using here is a cord that is fabricated out of a chain of little interlocking loops. Now, we're not hung up on what kind of cord the dentist use, uses. Some guys like twisted cords. Some guys like braided cords. This cord we're using simply because it 
has a little more inner thread space. Just give it a good firm air water blast. Don't be afraid of an air water blast making it bleed. The test is much as cleaning.